we have our brand new line of filters for the Mini 4 Pro drone. And it's a pretty sick little drone actually, depending on what you're using it for. But we've got three options of filters for you this year. We've got a CP filter, we've got an ND, the shutter three pack, and then we've got the NDPL Vivid three pack as well. So the CP individual, pretty good filter for just kind of increasing contrast, reducing reflections for your photo or your video if you're not too worried about shutter speed. But the other two packs, the Vivid and the Shutter, are both going to be geared for reducing your shutter speed to double your frame rate for video so you can capture motion the same way we perceive it in real life. And that's called the 180 degree rule of shutter. So three filters this year, but we do have different levels of ND. And the whole goal is to just cover a broad range of stops from early morning filming through midday sun all the way to sunset. So we've got ND8s, ND32s, and an ND128. So that's a three stop, a five stop, and a seven stop filter. And this range is gonna allow you to shoot throughout the entire day. This camera's got a 1.7 aperture, so that actually lets in quite a bit of light. So if you're shooting midday, you're definitely gonna need that seven stop filter to get shutter speed at double frame rate down to like 1 60th or 1 50th. Now what happens is we didn't want to include five filters to give you the whole range because I would make the whole thing expensive. So I want to dive into how you use ISO to compensate for the gaps in the filter line. So say you need an ND8 filter, you need three stops to get your shutter speed in the sweet spot. Perfect. You put that filter on. But if you needed only two stops, which would have been an ND4, all you have to do is take your ISO from 100 to 200 with that ND8 filter on, and that's going to give you an effective ND4 filter. Now what happens if you need this next step up, which is an ND16 filter, four stops, what you do is you put the ND32 five stop filter on, and then you take your ISO from 100 to 200 with that five stop filter on, and that's gonna effectively give you an ND16 filter. And same thing for the ND64, which is a six stop filter. If you need six stops, you're basically putting on the seven stop filter, increasing ISO from 100 to 200, effectively giving you the 64. So that's how you use your ISO to fill in the gaps there for the lack of the ND4, the ND16 and 64 that are not included in the three packs. But it just makes it way more simple to only carry and worry about three filters and use that ISO between one and 200 to compensate. And like usual, the only difference between the Shutter and Vivid collection, the Vivid collection includes the ND polarizer, so that's the built-in polarizing element. So you can rotate the filter, reduce reflections, increase color saturation, and also kind of increase contrast. Just gives you a little bit more punchy of a look. And the shutter collection is just the plain ND filters, and that's only gonna reduce light, no polarization added. So it'll be the same exact look if you're filming no filter, first filter, and back to no filter. And one little tip when you're filming with the NDPL or the polarizer filters, if you do end up rotating the camera into vertical mode, just make sure you adjust your polarization for vertical mode because when you do rotate that camera 90 degrees, you are changing the angle of polarization with the camera, with the filter. So you just wanna make sure you reset polarization every time you rotate from vertical to horizontal and back and forth. All these filters exactly the same weights as the DJI ND filter, so you're totally good to go on weight. If you have any questions on these filters, shoot us an email, happy to answer them to you. I'm Jeff, I'll see you on the next one.